Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Aspen Plus tutorial video. So today we're gonna do a simple simulation on the condensation of butane using simple heat exchangers. And the type of calculation that we're gonna focus on today would be shortcut calculation. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, before we begin, I think it'd be a, a good idea for us to understand what is, you know, a general definition of heat exchangers. So basically, you know, a, a, any heat transfer, uh, heat transfer equipment that can be used to transfer heat from one medium to another medium uh, for heating purposes, cooling purposes, condensation, vaporization, and all that kind of stuff. As long as they are, you know, there are some heat being transferred, uh, the, 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 the equipment, uh can can be generally regarded as uh, in, uh heat exchanger or exchangers in this case but uh but in most cases uh they are usually uh refers to you know uh an equipment that transfer heat from one uh, process stream to another process stream um of course there are different types of heat exchangers uh you know plate and frame uh flat uh shell and tube is probably the most common one uh in this case we're going to focus on the uh shell and tube heat exchanger only uh yeah as i said they are the most common heat exchangers uh they occupy around 65 percent of the market share so um the tubes is pretty uh, i mean it's not that it's not large it's not small either so you know you can you can pack around 50 up to 500 uh square meter of surface area per unit volumes of your heat exchangers and one of the advantage of it is, is it can be easily cleaned um of course uh if you want to see uh the, the, the design codes and standards they are available in the tema uh, website uh tema here is uh, is a short uh, or acronym for Tubule Exchange Manufacturers Association. Uh, these are just uh, example or images of uh, sharing of heat exchangers where in this side we have a uh, exchanger like a front head and then this one is called shell and then this one is the rear head or rear, rear end of your uh, heat exchangers. So you have a tube side uh, fluid uh, coming in, uh, it, uh, there's a this we have a flange here, and then uh, not the tube sheet, uh, and then we have a flange, and then all of the liquid will be you know will be uh, pass will will uh, will enter the tube sides, and then the shell side fluid will join will go to the shell side. Uh, the most common one would be a counter current configuration, and then we have a baffle here to uh, it's basically like, a, like a, tran a transverse of the flow direction of the fluid so it helps to uh, provide mixing and then uh, and then promote uh, what is it called promotes uh, uh, turbulence to allow for a better better heat transfer and then we have things uh, we have a solution uh, no I'm sorry we have a uh, we have a shell side uh, fluid uh, coming out okay um so for our design problem today uh we're going to focus on the condensation or, or condensation of uh n butane so we have n butane here coming in uh it is a saturated vapor uh at 4.9 bar and then the flow rate is 45,027 kilogram per hour and it will be condensed using a cooling water coming in uh at five bar uh but but prior to the to entering the heat exchangers the cooling water will uh the cooling water pressure will be raised to five bar from one bar to five bar and then what comes out will be a slightly higher temperature uh cooling waters as well as uh liquid methane no i'm sorry uh, liquid uh butane in this case we're gonna try to uh we're gonna try to uh, condense all of the uh incoming butane um, okay, these are all the necessary information that we're going to extract from our heat exchangers. Uh, we need to find what is the uh, LMTD collection factors. Uh, LMTD is a log mean temperature difference. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, the, the corrected LMTDs, heat exchange, how much heat uh, is being transferred, heat exchanger area, as well as uh, inlet and outlet water, uh, cooling water coming in, what's the temperature, coming out, what's the temperature. 
and then uh, uh, incoming or uh, incoming temperature of the butane and then outgoing temperature of butane and then the amount of butane condensed since we are attempting to condense all of the end butane um, <clears throat> uh, of course the, the the amount of end butane to be condensed is uh, 45027 kW per hour as well uh, before I move on, I just want to highlight to you what is the equation uh, used in Aspen Plus uh, to model or at least to simulate heat exchanger or heat exchanger uh, block using a shortcut calculation method. Oh, by the way, uh, we're going to use uh, simple heat exchangers and we're going to use shortcut calculation method. There are a lot, like, a lot of like method available, so, like you can use a rigorous or design uh, uh, design uh, heat exchanger calculation method where they will redirect you to the EDR, uh, exchanger design rating uh, tools. So that it will allow you to design the geometries of your heat exchangers, but we're not gonna do it uh, maybe this uh, in, in this video, maybe later. But anyway, uh, as you can see uh, in the box below, uh, we can uh, on, on the bottom left here, we have heat exchange equation uh, using Aspen Plus, where here we have Q, uh, heat transfer, uh, kilowatt, joule per second, whatever, whatever, you know, uh, is equal to uh, heat transfer, U here is heat transfer coefficient, uh, multiplied by surface area, multiplied by K here is log mean temperature difference, cohesion factors, and then multiply by LMTD, uh, log mean temperature difference. Uh, if you, you have to remember that this one, LMTD here, kind of like represent like a driving force for heat transfer. So the bigger the LMTD, the higher heat transfer. Um, K here is usually a, a factor that describes like a geometrical effect of your heat exchanges that may affect the, 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 LM, the, the overall LMTD. Uh, a here is just a surface area. Uh, U here is heat transfer coefficient. You know you can have like a clean, uh, clean, uh, clean U value as well as U uh, dirty U value because uh, they need to take into account the effect of fouling. Uh, but uh, when talking about fouling effects, um, uh, in shortcut calculation, that does not have that uh, Aspen does not uh, have the option for us to include the fouling factors. So. Uh, but in the other modes of calculation, uh, for example, uh, uh, in the design or detail calculation, or yeah, I think maybe design um, calculation mode, they have that, that particular features. Okay, uh, let's move on. All right, I'm, but before that, I'm going to talk about Tima sheet. Tima sheet is basically a form that space or, or, or yeah, it's kind of like a form uh, that specify important information uh, that are required uh, in the design of in the design and fabrication of heat, exp heat exchanger. Uh, they provide like information, for example, like uh, what are the fluid coming in, their, their properties, uh, fluid coming out, their location uh, relative to each other. So is, it, is it on the tube side, shell side, pressure drop, and things like that. And, and then they also have like uh, types of heat exchangers. You can have, uh, in this case, if you see here, highlighted in yellow color, you have a BEM type uh, uh, codes, I guess. Uh, and then you there are a lot of, different types of codes depending on the application. I recommend you to read this, uh, you know, this uh, booklet, I guess, from Tima. Uh, they have like a, a, a nice example of different codes for the front side, uh, shell side, as well, as well as the back side. Example, uh, in this case, is BEM. You can have BKU, uh, AEL, and, and, and a lot of stuff. Uh, you also have like a material construction here, uh, tube pitch, uh, and then tube diameters, tube orientation. Is it uh, is it ninety degrees, sixty degree, thirty degree? Uh, and then shell side, uh, shell uh, diameters, uh, thickness. Uh, uh, did I already mention material construction? Probably yes. And those kind of stuff. Basically, the geometry of your heat exchangers. And of course, uh, I, I look around, they, they have a, a variety of, uh, you know, the format is not con constant, but they, they consist the same information because, you know, different companies, they have their own internal, uh, internal like a uh, heat exchanger specification form. So, so yeah, it's going to be slightly different, but overall, if you know how to read this, I mean, if you're given 
uh, the, the team I see from different companies, they are pro, you can pretty much uh, apply the same uh, same thing to get the same information. Um, of course, uh, because uh, we're gonna do like a, a simple shortcut calculation. Most of this, uh, for example, uh, the, the geometry of heat exchangers is not gonna be uh, useful uh, for, this, uh, sim for this tutorial. But the important thing that I took from this uh, this uh, reference, I guess, this uh, specification sheet, or this one. Uh, as I said, we're gonna use a calculation method, shortcut. Um, we're gonna use a uh, hot side, uh, and butane, uh, cold side as cooling water. A U value here is 0 0.8048. Uh, I, I'm using this one value. Uh, here we have a dirty. Uh, the, uh, dirty here means after fouling, I guess. Uh, clean here is just a clean, uh, clean. Uh, there, there's no deposition of unwanted materials on the surface of your heat exchangers. Uh, LMT decollection factors actually is not mentioned anyway in S plus. The default value is one, but I just want to highlight to you. Uh, if it, you, you can modify the LMT decollection factors in S Pen plus, it depends on the geometry of your heat exchangers. But but uh, this one is just uh, like a random numbers, I guess. But normally it's gonna be like a close to one, maybe a greater. Uh, I read somewhere it's greater than 0.75, but 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 that, that's not really the not really the point. But the point here is you can modify LMT decollection factors in S Pen plus. And then on the uh, shell side, we have a basic drop of uh, point, uh, point zero eight three one seven, and then on the tube side we have point zero eight one eight seven. I think that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, let's go to our S Pen Plus a uh, software and begin uh, creating our flow sheet. Okay, everyone. Uh, these are my S Pen Plus software. Um, I already have specified my component, uh, which is butane as well as water. Um, um, as usual, hit next, and then I'm gonna use uh, Pen Robinson equation of states uh, because these are the ones specified in the papers. Actually, the the design problem I took it from the paper, by the way. Uh, is it from the papers or from the website? I don't really remember, but. But anyway, the, the, the thermodynamic property method that they choose is Pan Robinson. So hit next uh, as usual, and then we go to our simulation environment. All right, I'm gonna minimize this or close this one. Uh, and then, okay, I will add my uh, heat exchanger. So the one uh, in the model palette should be this one for uh, uh, for heat exchanger. This one is a simple heater, by the way. But I don't want to use this icon. Uh, maybe I use a nicer icon. I don't know, maybe this guy. Uh, this just a different representation. It doesn't mean that different icon. It, it is a, just a different icon. I mean, but the, the input form, the calculation method are, 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 are the same. This is just a different icon. I just want to choose a different uh, one compared to the default one that they have here. It's a bit, it's a bit, you know, it's like uh, not, not that nice, I guess. Anyway, and then I put a pleasure changes uh, here. I have a, I put a pump here. And then I connect my material stream. Uh, this one is cooling water. And then this one. Cooling water should go on the, uh, so cooling water is a uh, cooling medium, so it should enters on the cold side. And then it should exit on the cold side as well. So like this, and then the second one here, we have a hot stream, uh, uh, which is your, which is our, what is it called? Uh, our butane, uh, vapor, uh, saturated butane. So connect here, maybe I put them somewhere here, I guess, and then goes out. Okay, and then I put that here. Okay, maybe I zoom in a bit. After that, I will rename, maybe I rename uh, this one, I rename as condenser. Uh, uh, this one is pump. Okay, uh, this one I rename as uh, CW1. Uh, this one I rename as uh, CW2. 
Um, I think this one. I think this one. I can been rename as CW3. Oh, it's the other way around. Okay, that's nice. Okay, here I rename as as what is it called? Um, C. Uh, no, no. Uh, C4 in in. Uh, C4 means butane. Uh, here I I rename as C4 out. All right. Okay, this is my flow sheet. Uh, this is just a simple flow sheet. Not really, not, not really, you know, there's not, not, there's nothing new with it. Um, okay, and then I hit next. Uh, I will specify my C4 screen. Uh, I already know the price, the pressure, but I know they are, uh, it is a saturated uh, vapor. So I choose a vapor fraction equal to one. Here I switch to mass flow of butane, which is around 45,027 45, kilogram per hour. And then I hit next. Um, here is my cooling water. It goes in at one cells, uh, no, I'm sorry, one bar, and then uh, coming out, no, uh, coming in uh, one bar uh, temperature, uh, 20 degrees Celsius. Switch to mass flow, uh, water is, 378 uh, 500 uh, kilogram per hour and then I hit next okay uh, I'm, I'm gonna close this model pellet because it's taking to, uh, so many space all right so this is the input specification form for your uh, heat exchangers uh, the model or the calculation method I guess that you that we will use is shortcut uh, and then uh, flow direction is counter current. The calculation method that we choose is design, meaning that we specify whatever outlet of our screen, uh, either one of them, and then they will calculate what is the geometry. Uh, geometry here means not like uh, in shortcut calculation, they don't really mention like a lot of things. They just mention like the surface areas. Uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, and then the rating. Uh, if you choose rating, uh, you know, you need to specify uh, uh, UA value here, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, heat transfer coefficient. You need to specify heat exchanger area, if you know, uh, and then your condition of the outlet. And then the, the, the program or the block will calculate uh, what is uh, the required, okay, minimum required, uh, the, the, the required uh, heat exchanger area and then they will see whether your area that you specified here is bigger or smaller so if it's bigger it's going to be oversized by some percent and then if it's uh, lower than the required surface area they will uh, give a status or, or comment saying that it is under uh, uh, undersized by certain uh, amount certain uh, percent and then the, the next one is simulation where you to specify a heat exchange area. Uh, UA value here is uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, heat transfer coefficient. Uh, and they will calculate what is the outlet condition. Okay, here we have a maximum fouling, but this does not apply when you choose a shortcut method. All right, I'm going to choose a design option. So um, I'm going to choose the cold stream uh, uh is it no no i'm sorry a uh, hot stream outlet vapor fraction so i'm going to specify zero indicating that my butane will be condensed into its saturated liquid temperature and i'm pretty much done actually but <clears throat> uh, there are a few a few things that i need to specify number one here is LMTD, uh, correction factors uh, the default one as i said they are one so i'm going to choose 0 0.9 uh, crazy drop here uh, on the hot side, uh, which is uh, hot side is my shell. So I'm going to specify crazy drop of 0 0.08317. And then if you click here, you have a cool side. Uh, crazy drop is negative uh, 0 0.08187. And then this is my, this is your. Uh, um, if you go to the next step, this is your U method here is your what is it called? 
your heat transfer coefficient. Uh, they will uh, the default one they use uh, this uh, face specific values, you know. Um, but you probably need to uh, change this value depending on the situation. But I'm gonna choose a constant U values, which is zero point z. Uh, what's the value? Uh, zero point eight eight. 408 yes which uh kilowatt square meter kelvin okay now i'm done specifying all of the information so i hit next uh oh yeah i forgot uh to specify discharge pressure of one of uh, five bar for the pump and then hit next and run your simulation It is a simple simulation, so there's nothing uh, out of the ordinary. So uh, I get a result. So what I can do is I can go to my flow sheet. I, <clears throat> I open my heat exchangers and then you can see the result, uh, a thermal result here. It shows uh, the condition of the inlet and then outlet for the hot stream. Uh, vapor fraction, uh, initially it was saturated uh, vapor, it becomes saturated liquid. Cold stream incoming temperatures and then these are heat duty uh, change to kilowatts and then if you see if you see exchange details these are my heat duty four two four eight uh, required uh, heat exchangers two to eight huh. okay uh, and then uh, this one is uh, the the values uh, kilowatt. Uh, Square meter per Kelvin, these are LMTD corrected after I apply 0.9 uh, LMTD correction factor. I don't want to discuss about this uh, in here. I already compiled all of the necessary information in Aspen uh, in my slide. So let's go back to our slide and conclude our finding. Okay, everyone, uh, these are my simulation results. So on the left column here, we have a detail that I need basically the information that I need to obtain. <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, I'm fasting, so my, uh, I have a sore throat, I guess. So here on the second column, we have the value obtained from SP+. This one is the value obtained from the TIMA specification sheet in the earlier slide. Uh, some of it are not available, so we're just going to ignore. But as you can see here, these are 0.9. Collected LFTD is 22.17. Heat exchange area is 4249. This one is 4300. Area is 228, much smaller than the required one, which is 268. Uh, inlet outlet is 20, same 28.9, 29.8. I mean, uh, the same, uh, more or less. Uh, inlet 49.7. Uh, 49, 46, 43, uh, between condens is 45. Now, you might be wondering why this uh, and this are slightly different in terms of like, geometries and then outlet condition. Uh, actually, uh, there are a few things. Number one, in the TIMA specification sheet, they do not really mention what is the component being tested as a being condensed. They just mention like the molecular weight. So I think the closest, uh, I, I tried to search and then the closest one that I see was uh, was butane. So that's why I select butane. But actually that's not even enough. So they also mentioned like, a, a, what is it called? A thermal conductivities and heat, cons uh, heat, capacity, uh, heat capacity and things like that. So I do like a, a pure analysis in aspirin plus of butane. Uh, I found out that they are more or less the same, but they are not exact. So those differences could be uh, contributing to the different in the to the difference in the uh, heat transfer uh, being exchanged. This number one. And if you see here, uh, the dew point for the paper is forty six. Mine is forty nine. So uh, if we are talking about the same thing under saturation, uh, what is it called? Saturated uh vapor condition they're supposed to be the same but in my case the saturation temperature for butane is 49 and the saturated uh, saturation temperature for whatever fluid that they have which they don't really mention is 46. so those are the things that can contribute to the difference in the heat exchange as well as heat exchange area and then of course i didn't know they don't specify uh lmtd collection factors because you know they are they already have geometry, so it doesn't really, I mean, it can be calculated easily using uh, 
EDR, but uh, we use a shortcut calculation method, so that does not really apply. Uh, and again, I, I do, uh, I do, I already mentioned that the, uh, even though I choose butane, uh, the properties are slightly different. Not because I use a incorrect uh, property method or whatever. It's not. It's that they don't really mention what is the uh, fluid being investigated. So I cannot. So it is like apples, apples and oranges, I guess. Even though the properties are more or less the same. Okay, um, that will be all for me. If you like the videos, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channels and I will see you guys again in the next video. All right, bye-bye. And by the way, happy uh, Hari Raya.